I made a deal with myself a couple of months ago that I wouldn't buy any more books and yet here we are. But has it ever been different than that? No. <laughs> I mean, we are not surprised you and I are here for this book haul. Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. I have my first book haul of 2023 for you guys here. It is a collective book haul. Some of these I've actually like just recently bought, AKA <laughs> this whole pile of books. <laughs> and then this little pile over here are books that I have been collecting over the past couple of months because I have been really great actually with not buying too many books if we ignore this past week. So let's just get right into it. And um, let's start off with a book swap that I did with a colleague of mine from the bookstore. As some of you may know, I work at a bookstore in Utrecht, the city in which I study, which is called Brousse. And I had a really nice colleague over there, Sana, and we swapped some books. The first one that I have is Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I really quite liked the love hypothesis. However, the more that I'm thinking about it, the less I'm liking it. I still thought it was an enjoyable romance. And I loved that like our main character was a girl in STEM, like she was working in kind of a field that I had studied before, like in the biomedical sciences world. So I felt a little connection to her in that kind of way. And knowing that it was like a Kylo Ren fan fiction though, like I don't know how to feel about that. And I don't even know what this one is about. I honestly don't know anything about this romance at all. I just know it's romance with STEM as like a huge theme in it as well. And if I I just need a cute little romance to pick up. This is one that I will give a go. Then a book that she unhauled that I have been seeing everywhere on Instagram lately, and that is One Dark Window by Rachel Gillick. Especially like a frolic through fiction. I have been seeing her talk about this book a lot on Instagram. Let's see what it's actually about, shall we? I was born with a fever, my blood dark as night. An ancient mercurial spirit is trapped inside Elspeth Spindle's head. She calls him the nightmare. He protects her, he keeps her secrets, but nothing comes for free, especially magic. When Elspeth meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road, she is thrust into a world of shadow and deception. Together, they embark on a dangerous quest to cure the town of Blunder from the dark magic infecting it. As the stakes heighten and their undeniable attraction intensifies, Elspeth is forced to face her darkest secret. Yet, the nightmare is slowly, darkly taking over her mind, and she might not be able to stop him. I mean, oh, I don't know if you can see, but like this is a fairy loot edition, I think. And it just looks absolutely creepy. And like the idea that I have been getting from other people's reviews is that this is a perfect dark academia fantasy horror story. Like I don't want to misclassify the genre of this book, but I'm also really bad <laughs> at categorizing books in certain genres. It just sounds very mysterious and dark and I've heard great things about it. I believe it's going to be a duology, but don't quote me on that. And then the last one that my colleague gave to me is The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. I think this is a Illumicrate, yeah, exclusive edition. Again, got dark academia vibes from this one. Delani always talked to the dark, but now the dark talks back. I feel like a theme between these two books. Delani Mayers Petrov is tired of being seen as fragile just because she's deaf. So when she's accepted into a prestigious program at Godbull University that trains students to slip between parallel worlds, she's excited for the chance to prove herself. But her semester gets off to a rocky start when she has an awkward encounter with a pretentious upperclassman whom she has every intention of keeping her distance from. Colton Prince has been ordered to keep far away from the new girl and the voices that call to her from the shadows. But the pull of her proves impossible to ignore and he can't help but be fascinated by her unusual talents. After a fellow student turns up dead, Delani and Colton are forced to form a tenuous alliance plummeting down a rabbit hole of deeply buried universities secrets. They soon find themselves up against something old and nameless, an enemy that threatens to tear them and their forbidden partnership apart. Again, so intriguing. I have never heard anyone talk about this though, but the cover is so creepy with all the little skulls on it as well. I mean, these special editions, they are just so gorgeous and I love the stenciled edges as well. I mean, I have enough books to add to like my dark academia TBR and I have another book in this haul, which I will show you right now that really fits the dark academia theme. And that is Bella Donna by Adeline Grace. And it's so funny because at my work, we sometimes have books that are like misprinted and this one was up for grabs for free. And a lot of my friends have been talking about this book and have been really interested in picking this one up. Orphan as a Baby, 19 
16 year old Signa has been raised by a string of guardians, each more interested in her wealth than her well being, and each has met an untimely end. Suspicious? Her remaining relatives are the elusive Hawthorns, an eccentric family living at Thorngrove, an estate both glittering and gloomy. Its patriarch mourns his late wife through wild parties, while his son grapples for control of the family's waning reputation, and his daughter suffers from a mysterious illness. When their mother's restless spirit appears claiming she was poisoned, Sikna realizes that the family she depends on could be in grave danger and enlists the help of a surly stable boy to hunt down the killer. Sikna's best chance of uncovering the murderer though is an alliance with death himself. Okay, intriguing. A fascinating, dangerous shadow who has never been far from her side. Though he's made her life a living hell, death shows Signa that their growing connection may be more powerful and more irresistible than she ever dared imagine. Okay, yeah, so these three books all sound very much alike, like the same themes, and they do intrigue me a lot. Two other books that I got from work are November by Thomas Oldhoefeld. This is a Dutch author and he has been recognized by Stephen King or like not recognized, but like praised by Stephen King for his dark and twisted stories. I believe that this is about a town in the United States and every single year during November, offerings are being made and that's all that I know. It sounds very mysterious and I never read Dutch authors anymore and I feel like I should give them more of a chance. And so many people have been recommending Thomas Oldehoefeld's work to me at the bookstore and it does really intrigue me. And the last book that I got from work for free is The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. I mean, this gorgeous hardcover. I own book one, which is Six Crimson Cranes. And I haven't read that one yet, but I was like, if I like it, at least I got the sequel right now. It'll stay on my shelves for a little while before I get to it. My friends here on booktube, you know, because they talk about books so passionately as well, I get influenced by them. And one of my very, very good friends, Brit from Basically Brit, she loves a certain author's work so much. And when I saw this book for a really great price, I was like, I gotta give this a go. I wanna see if Brit's reading tastes and my reading taste like match in some way. So I bought just Kids by Patti Smith. And I know nothing about Patti Smith, but Britt told me that she was like this, if I'm getting it right, uh, don't quote me on anything, but that sh she was like this rock star living her life in New York City. Basically this book is kind of like a tribute to her life in New York in like the 60s and the 70s. And I believe that she got into a relationship with a famous artist as well. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's like nonfiction, but written in like a very beautiful writing so that it will kind of come across as like storytelling. So I wanna get the fascination, you know? I wanna I wanna see what Brit is talking about and why she's hyping up Patti Smith so much. Okay, pile number one out of the way. Now let's go on to pile number two. And I'm gonna start off that pile with with another little pile of books that I have talked about in my previous video. And if you haven't seen that one yet, please go check it out. It's my Paris reading book shopping vlog. I went on a very spontaneous trip to Paris with Beth from Books Nest and Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. And it was one of the best decisions that I have made um, in a long time. And it brought me so much joy, so much happiness. I loved exploring Paris with them. And I really want to come back to the city because I still haven't seen enough in two days. Like Paris is huge and I, I need more days to visit it, to meet more people, to experience the ambiance. But I did buy five books when I went to Paris. <laughs> I'm gonna quickly mention them, but if you don't wanna find out which books I bought in Paris and watch my book shopping vlog first, I will leave it up here so you can check it out. And I will spoil the book haul in three, two, one. <laughs> I bought Lemon by Kwon Jeo Sun. This is not supposed to be a murder story, but it's about the people left behind. And it sounded really interesting. It's very short. It's literally like 150 pages. So this might be a really fun, quick read. Then I have Sex and Rage by Eve Babbitt. I know that Eve Babbitt is very well known for like her time period, I think like in the 1970s. I don't know anything about her or her work, but I think that this is like an adult fiction about the 1970s life in Los Angeles, filled with, filled with lots of beautiful people, with flirting, with drinks, with drugs and I don't know, sounds interesting to me. Then I have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I was majorly influenced by Leonie from the book Leo. I never really read classics, but I do wanna give them 
a bit more of a go because I've heard so many people rave about so many classics and I just have this like internalized fear of just not being able to understand anything that's being described in them or that I'm just like not intellectually smart enough to get what they're talking about. But this is about a main character who is like supposed to be on the brink of her future, living in the 1950s, but she has depression. And this book really sparked my interest because Sylvia Plath actually, unfortunately killed herself a couple of weeks after the publication of The Bell Jar. And this book is about depression. Then I bought two books at Shakespeare and Company, which is a gorgeous bookstore. And I got Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. I love thrillers and murder mysteries. And I just don't know in what category this book falls, but it seems like a lot of fun because Finley Donovan is writing a murder mystery book herself. And while she's working on this book, I think somewhere in like a public space, like a coffee shop, for instance, someone overhears her talking about this murder and they mistake her for a hit woman and she gets offered this hit woman job and i think she's taking it on <laughs> um which just sounds like so much fun i know that until so far there are three books out in the series it might be a trilogy I have no clue. And then the last one that I got in Paris is The Mothers by Britt Bennett. I adore The Vanishing Hat by Britt Bennett. It, it's, well, I cannot even speak. It's one of my favorite books and it just took me by so much surprise. I think that this is Britt Bennett's first published work and I just wanna give that a go and see whether I like that one as well. I think the main themes that are being discussed in this book is like a teen pregnancy, but also like this love triangle that's going on and kind of like our main characters reflecting on their lives to you know, think about why they made certain decisions. And I find that very interesting in books. So I really wanted to get this one. So yeah, these were the five books that I bought in Paris, but then still I have four more books left to show you. And these are all new releases, which I cannot wait to pick up. The most least recent release, do you know what I mean? <laughs> this one came out in December and all of a sudden I saw this at work and the cover just really intrigued me. And that is Influential by Amara Sage. I've never heard anyone talk about it, but look at this spine, gorgeous. And this is a YA contemporary that deals with internet popularity, being an Instagram star, but reading about the truth behind being famous on Instagram and cancel culture. I think that this is gonna be very interesting and I've never heard anyone talk about this book. So so yeah, I wanna be the first one to bring your attention to this book. I don't know if it's any good. I just love to read a book that really focuses on social media and mental health because social media is such a new concept in our lives. Like it only has been here for like about 15 ish years where social media has been super prominent in our lives and the effects of it just really fascinate me and i really wanted to read a book about that in fiction form so influential maybe you will be influential to me as well here come the most exciting new releases that i picked up maybe this book actually came out earlier than Influential, but that is Gleanings by Neil Schusterman. If you've been following me for this past year, you know that I have become obsessed with the Scythe trilogy, but I recently just finished it at the start of 2023. And this is a short story collection, which I would never voluntarily pick up a short story collection, but because it's Neil Schusterman and because it takes place in the scythe world i just I, I need to read it and i've heard that this is actually a lot of fun apparently it's a waterstones exclusive edition but i think that's because there is like a little extra short story in this edition as well Whew, okay wait i have two new releases that i want to talk about and i'm going to save the best one i think for last so first i want to tell you about begin again by emma lord i read tweet cute by her which is like right here on the back that's a ya contemporary romance about two family businesses who are into the food industry and they kind of have like a twitter feud and that was adorable it took me by surprise i absolutely loved it and begin again <laughs> sounds a bit like my life. It feels weird to be saying like, I'm so excited to pick this one up, but I feel like the main character and I, I could relate to her probably on so many levels. Andy Rose has a plan, transfer from community college to the competitive Blue Ridge State, major in psychology, which I am majoring in right now, and become an iconic self, self-help? I always say that word incorrectly, self-help figure. All it will take is ruthless organization and her trademark unrelenting enthusiasm to pull it together. But the moment Andy arrives, her plans go off the rails. Her boyfriend is missing in action and she's met Milo, who's disrupting all her ideas about love one wise crack at a time. And when her dreams of following in her much missed mother's footsteps seem to falter at the first 
hurdle. Andy learns that the best laid plans are not necessarily the right ones. It is an unforgettable novel of love and starting again. I just, you know, the similarities between just her majoring. Okay, there's a lot of people actually majoring in psychology in this world, but I don't know why. Just like the premise of this book really spoke to me and I loved Tweet Cute. So I want to read more Emma Lord and I think this one is going to be amazing and perhaps maybe become a new favorite contemporary of mine. So we shall see. I saved the best new release for last or at least it's so hyped and I'm very excited to read it as well. It also kind of like came up to me out of nowhere, but that's also because I don't keep track of new releases. Okay. And that is The Stolen Air by Holly Black. I am so excited to get back into this world. I started reading this trilogy just when it came out and The Cruel Prince, I loved it. The Wicked King was like, in my opinion, kind of a masterpiece. And then the third book, The, the, the Queen of Nothing, yes. It was kind of forgettable a little bit to me. Like, I don't really know what happened in this whole trilogy anymore. So I do want to read like a whole synopsis, reading back what these relationships are between the different courts and the fairies. And who are we supposed to hate? And who are we supposed to like? Who are we supposed to not trust, you know? So all I know is that we are getting back into this world and that we will follow, um, <sighs> What's his name again? Yeah, we're following Oak, AKA the brother of our main character that we followed in the original trilogy or like half brother or he is a family member, okay? But just the whole layout of this book is just, it makes me so happy. I mean, like, let me show you how beautiful this map is just like, illustrated. The drawing style is one of my favorites and like the chapter headings are so beautiful and detailed as well. Uh, so yeah, um, I, uh, I fueled my book buying problem and I hope that for now I will be able to kind of calm down and not buy any more books, but you know, no promises. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.